Okay, uh, Tabitha, um, I, first I want to start off by saying, um, uh, anything I say may or may not apply to you. Uh, just take it with a grain of salt, take it for what it's worth, um, and uh, I'll explain uh, what I think of your situation in a moment. But first I want to say that um, I don't normally uh, look to other people for validation of myself, and I don't think anyone should, and this might be part of your situation too. But um, that being said, I'm making an exception today because I've had to hear, hear uh, from various individuals throughout the day how I'm such an unpopular individual and people don't like me. Yet at the same time, you personally asked me to comment and that, that made my day. So I, I feel very privileged that you would ask. Um, so apparently you like me. <laughs> uh, now, um, as I say, um, I, you know, I don't know all the particulars of your situation. Uh, and again, I, I wish I could have sympathy for you and feel sorry for you, uh, but I can't. Not because I'm a cold, heartless bastard. Well, I am, but that's not the reason I can't feel sorry for you. Um, the reason is I know that it doesn't help. I mean, it makes people feel good. You know, oh, they hurt me, somebody did something, someone's not treating me right. So you tell people and they say, oh, I feel, feel sorry for you, feel bad. And that can create a cycle. Uh, 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 cycle where, and I've seen it happen to, you know, I've engaged in it, I've seen other people do it, um, where you get to begin to feed off the sympathy and it doesn't really motivate you to do anything about your situation. Um, and I've heard some people give some advice and some of it may work, some of it may not, I don't know, you have to use your own judgment. Uh, I like what Les Brown, he's a motivational speaker, says, he says when people complain about things in their life and they go on TV and complain it. This isn't necessarily you, but some people go on TV and complain it. it is, half the people in the audience don't care, and the other half are glad it happened to you. <laughs> because, you know, they're, they're glad it didn't happen to them. You know, and they want you to stay away, so whatever they did to you, they don't do to them. And, um, you know, he's kind of funny the way he says that, but then he goes on to say something uh, a little more important. He says there's only really two things you need to worry about or focus on. That is what's going on in your life, number one. And number two, what are you going to do about it? And I love that attitude because um, when I try to remember that whenever somebody's in a situation, and even if it's hurtful, I try to, to tell them, you know, what's, what, you know, and even tell myself this because I need to, to learn this a lot myself and go back to these lessons. Um, what are you going to do about it? Well, this is just some suggestions. Um, these are things that I've done in my life that have helped empower me. Uh, there's something called Neuro Linguistic Programming, or NLP. What NLP allows you to do is to reprogram your mind. And it works like magic, though it's not magic. There's a science to this. Uh, it uses affirmations. And I think that if you were to use neuro linguistic programming to have a stronger self image and, and even you can even love yourself but not project that well uh, then I think it would help immensely uh, what I would like for you to try is to write down on a piece of paper I am a powerful force to be reckoned with people respect me write it in big bold letters I am a powerful force to be reckoned with. People respect me. And the thing is, when you do these affirmations as far as neuro-linguistic programming is concerned, what you want to do is make the statement in present tense and positive. And when I say in the positive, I don't just mean in the, you know, oh, let's all be positive and bright and cheery. No, no, I mean in the, that's why it's called an affirmation. It's an affirmative statement. So you have to have it affirmed in a positive context. So you wouldn't say um, I want people to stop bugging me because that's a negative sta that statement is posed in, in, with a negative, the word not. 
or, or stop or whatever. Or you you want you don't you don't want to phrase it that way. You always want to fa phrase it as the positive, and you want to say I, and you want to make the statement in the present. Your brain responds to this, and even if you don't believe it, even if you don't feel it, you keep saying it because some part of your brain is going to hear it, and it's going to spread like a virus. And then before long you will be acting out of that and you will be projecting power and people will recognize that and so it is an empowerment tool uh, so by all means I would really like for you to consider this and maybe do a little research on neuro-linguistic programming it's a great tool uh, and the other thing too that goes hand in hand with this is uh, this uh, when I was studying a lot of these kinds of things and I was particularly wanting to uh, empower myself to do better with uh, women, and I've you know really came a long way with that. Contrary to what people on this site think of me, um, at any rate, that's another story. Uh, I would do these uh, posturings and just body language. And the great thing about body language is once you learn to recognize body language. Um, well, I've said things to people like, well, I hear what you're saying, but from the tone of your voice and the way your, your body language is situated, I'm not convinced that you believe what you're telling me. And when you say something like that to somebody, it, 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 you know, they just straighten right up and it's like, oh my God, this person's reading my mind. No, I'm not reading your mind. I'm reading your body. And you're telling me more with your body than you are with uh, your words. Now, this is important because it works two ways. It also means that you can adjust your posture, you can learn the body language to project uh, power, to project uh, that you are a force to be reckoned with. And believe me, if you, if you study this stuff and work on it, it's, it works like magic, but it's not. There's a lot of science behind it. And a lot of this stuff, too, works subconsciously. You can be, um, I don't know, if you, sometimes you can be around a person, and men are especially like this, and you pick something up and you don't know why, where women, body language comes even more naturally, and a lot of times they are focused on it and in tune with it. And uh, it, it's something that is just a lot more congruent with the way a woman identifies uh, herself and her r relationship to her surroundings than men do. So I had to learn it. And just to give you an example, I walked through this club and I was doing this eye contact thing. And the, the trick was, when you make eye contact with someone, the first one to break eye contact is of lower status. And I don't mean financially, it's more of a, uh, of a status as far as the pecking order of the situation. So I thought, well, let's play with this. And I just start holding eye contact with people. Now, now here's a real important lesson if you decide to study body language and play with these kind of things. And this also ties into neuro-linguistic programming. Up to about four or five seconds, then you want to break eye contact because if you don't, anyone who holds eye contact longer than five seconds, you're dealing with either A, someone else who's doing neuro-linguistic programming games and playing the same game you are, or that I was, or two, you're dealing with someone who's psychotic. And I've seen that. Um, so you want to be careful. But what I did was I walked to this club and I refused to break eye contact. And it was amazing that um, more often, I mean, people broke eye contact with me first. And I also noticed that they broke eye contact by shifting their eyes left, by shifting their eyes right, or by shifting their eyes downward. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting. So then I wanted to work on the body language. So a few days later, I go back to the same club, same kind of crowd, only I throw my shoulders back and hold my head up. And I felt kind of like a jerk, really. I mean, I don't normally walk that way. you know. But I, I see guys walk like that, and to me, uh, some of them look natural, and some of them look like they're trying to, to pull something, I don't know. But I just gave it a try. And so I walked through this club, doing the eye contact thing, with my shoulders back and my head up, just kind of strutting around. And once again, nearly everybody broke eye contact with me first, but 
by holding my shoulders back and my head up, 80 to 90 percent of them broke eye contact by looking down, which is also significant of status. So, at the very, uh, uh, at, at, at a very, you know, a very interesting point I'd like to make too, is if you start to work on projecting and, and these affirmations and your body language, uh, a couple other really magical things happen. You're so focused on the, these elements that you're not as worried about the people um, uh, bullying you, number one. And number two, they go from being the bully to being your lab rats. Now, I don't normally like to refer to people as lab rats, but I think in the case of a bully, it's quite all right. Uh, so, I had a lot of fun at this period of my life. I learned a lot of empowering things about how to interact with people. And, you know, take it for what it's worth. If this sounds like something that you think could be a benefit to you, um, by all means, um, you know, there's plenty of resources online. There's a, a lot of s online seminar stuff, uh, all sorts of information um, and books on body language. And when you uh, start this, and this is another thing, it feels weird. It feels fake. Well, there's a phrase called fake it till you make it. And what that implies what that implies is um, it takes some time for it to feel natural. It takes some time for it to sink in. It takes some time for the neurons to, 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 to get it uh, processed. Um, go, going back to the neuro-linguistic programming thing, uh, you can make these affirmations about anything in your life. I one time uh, scolded a student of mine uh, when I taught at Brown Mackey College uh, he said, Mr. Collier, I can't. I said, no, no, don't tell me you can't. Every time you say, I can't do this, you are affirming to yourself what you can't do. From now on, I, and I told all my students this, if you want my help, say, Mr. Collier, how can I? So when you start to say things in the context of how can I, your brain goes to work to answer the question. When you put things in the context, context of I can't, your brain is reaffirming what it can't do. So it was like magic with my students. Um, they would say, uh, Mr. Collier, how can I? Uh, no, wait, let me try something else first. Because by the time they finished asking me, some new idea already popped into their head. This is how neuro-linguistic programming works. And so, by all means, um, I think this is the kind of thing that everybody should learn in high school or at some point in their development. Uh, we don't teach people how to program our own minds. Uh, we don't teach people how to project. And uh, those who do learn that, either instinctively or because they've studied it, um, have the advantage. And some of them take the advantage. And if it feels uh, like you're manipulating people, um, well, that can be true, that can happen, or you can not look at it as manipulating people, look at it as this is my development and I'm learning how to project and these other people are responsible for their lives. Uh, so I wish the best of luck to you. I really think that um, if you learn to project better, learn to, to display uh, how powerful a being I know that you really are. Uh, th these bullies um, not only will they probably stop bullying you and I've seen and experienced this it'll turn around they will want some of what you got um, and it's not going to happen overnight but please consider it if not then you know there's a lot of other people gave you plenty of good advice um, so best of luck to you I've got, uh, I'm going to try and get to work on some of the psychic challenge stuff that we're doing um, and uh, let me know uh, if you decide to look into any of that if you decide to test any of that and if you have any further questions I spent a, a, a good deal of time and energy in my life on it okay so thanks oh, and thanks again too for asking me um, I say it made my day